Welcome to my Dangerous Ideas presentation. I'm Dr. Maria Alejandra Pinero de Plaza, and I will talk about holding the suspension bridge of ongoing high-quality care. First, I acknowledge the Ghana people, the traditional owners of the lands on which I live and work. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging leadership, and their new generations. I will present six interconnected ideas. They are exciting and easy to understand concepts, even when they sound a little bit complicated. This figure describes the current life course theory. Using a square uh, that is describing the life course, the emerging theory tells us that the proportion of cares that need to be met through self-care is located at the top of this figure and goes within a U-shaped line. Its central assumption is that mostly around two points in life the beginning of the, and the end of life, a person care, uh, the person care needs need, tend to be met by others. So these other carers will be informal and paid uh, carers like parents and, and family members, and they are located in spaces with the number one. They also can be formal care carers uh, located with the number twos uh, across the bottom part of the image, and professional health social care services, which are located and positioned in the areas with the number three. This life course distribution, this U-shape, seems reasonable for many of us. However, I argue that in many, many cases, the increasing demands of aging populations, disability, chronic conditions, and their other comorbidities require twisting such a U-shape into a horizontal line, more like a suspension bridge. And this suspension bridge is suggesting that the person needs ongoing high-quality care. My recent experiences investigating marginalized populations like the frail homebound and the ridden people in Australia support the importance of building such a type of suspension bridge across the life course. For example, in 2018, the Australian Bureau of Statistics survey of disability, aging and carers found, found that around 600,000 people with disabilities are being preventing, prevented from leaving their homes because of their own disability or difficulty using transport. Data from this survey were not fully reported or digested to help us understand that of all people with disability in Australia, 0.9% reported not leaving home at all. Of those, around 20,000 were very young people. 20,000 were aged between 5 and 64 years, and more than 18,000 were aged 65 years and above. The majority indicating that their disability or their health conditions were the main reasons they did not leave their home at all. If you think about the self-care needs of these Australians and many other people around the world, you might agree with me on converting this, li this line of the caring life course theory, this U-shape, into a sustainable ongoing bridge dedicated to the care of these populations. This bridge can be seen as an essential service and a human right. Perhaps we could maintain this bridge using fewer resources through the approaches that I am introducing in this presentation. Through this design, I'm trying to illustrate another type of force distribution to sustain the suspension bridge of ongoing high quality care that I'm talking about. It does not depend on mounting up the care provided by others across the life span. There are many ways to overcome care gaps. This bridge design is a good analogy, presenting an enormous pillar that we can see there, supporting the bridge by a quartz and specific angles of design. This pillar is analogous to the technology and societal basis that we need to improve care. And the courts and the angles could be the political, cultural, economic connections necessary to sustain ongoing care. This is not only a philosophical proposition. Real breaches around the world are holding up and resisting incredible forces using the strategies they are talking about. These strategies are transferable to gerontology. My bridge vision presents us with measurable and practical ways of placing weight away from the healthcare system. These are proven examples of how we can change the care weight distribution from the current overturning forces applied to the person, their informal care networks, their families, and their communities at the moment. 
These ideas are based on antifollicular geometry and tensile integrity. They are also used in medicine because our body is the best example of tensile integrity, which is also known as tensegrity. In bridge designs, the engineers optimize their models by technology to create structures that support variable weight distribution, support strong winds, natural disasters, earthquakes, and other difficulties. I dare you to visit these videos to start thinking about the transferability of these concepts and laws, and laws for building bridges and using antifollicular geometry and tensile integrity. They could be important for improving our abilities to compose sustainable complex care structures supported by investment in only few relevant pillars, like in the video that I'm playing here. Look how the weight is distributed and sustained just by few relevant pillars. So enabling continuity and integration of care can be a matter of researching and modeling our macro approaches, micro and meso approaches, using these empirically improving laws to address the complexities of care, the healthcare system, and the delivery and administration of its services. Using them, these uh, concepts and these strategies might relieve the pressure from financial, regulatory, and the exhausted human resources demands. The question is, Will gerontologists bring these principles to help us survive the forces and tensions associated, associated with aging populations? Well, considering some of my recent experience in transdisciplinary projects and teams, I trust gerontologists and health researchers because they will inform the creation and implementation of systemic innovation for sustaining better ongoing high quality care services and distributing current weights and future weights uh, on the healthcare system in, a, in, appropriate, in appropriate ways. Developing our understanding across the life continuum involves expanding our research of complex systems and their measurements. Extending this line of research will help us distribute current healthcare weight again. We could identify behavioral structures and science implementation patterns that support people care across the life span. These activities can help us by investing in essential structural connections for our necessary care bridge. Using engineering knowledge, artificial intelligence, co-design, and prediction modeling, we can also run a buckling simulation to evaluate if one of the suspended care elements of our bridge might collapse or break, and we can predict how and when some care supported structures, for instance, technological, social, economic, educational, scientific, or political will fail. In conclusion, transdisciplinary investigation modeling the use of technology and the compression and tension elements of healthcare systems might find a way to save resources while bringing high quality care solutions to those with chronic self-care impairments across their life course. If you want to see how these ideas are relevant for more than 600,000 Australians, I am kindly inviting you to visit our 2022 Enlightened Arts edition, which is co-designed and co-researched with and by health consumers for this Australian Association of Gerontology Conference. Thank you for listening.